Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is yet another review, and this time around, I am sharing my thoughts on the 2021 thriller, The Woman in the Window. Now, this is one of those films that came out last year, and it got absolutely slammed by critics. People hated this movie. There were all these videos from popular YouTubers who talked about how terrible the movie was, and... I can get why some people didn't really care for this, but I don't understand why people put this on their worst of lists. I don't think it's that bad. In fact, I think it's a little underrated when you look at uh, the amount of films that came out last year that, in my opinion, were way fucking worse. That being said, it's not as terrific of a thriller as it could have been, but... I still found it well worth a watch. It's based on a novel which I haven't read, so I can't really say whether or not the film is a good adaptation of the novel or it does it justice. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who say the novel by A.J. Finn is so much better and this is a slap in the face, and I can't really say that because I haven't read the book. So I can only judge my opinion based on what I saw here with the film. And what I saw wasn't that bad. It was pretty solid, actually, for the most part. I mean, there were some issues I had with it. I mean, the script had some moments where it was a little too incredulous or some moments where it was a little bit too predictable or the tone was a little bit off. But uh, I actually thought the twist worked. I know some people criticize the twist heavily. I thought the twist was uh, genuinely good and one of the better twists that I've seen in this kind of film. And at least the, the one that involves the killer, not the one that involves the most obvious thing when it comes to the film's plot. The movie is directed by Joe Wright, who also got a lot of criticism for his direction. A lot of people said he didn't have the right stuff, and I don't get it. I thought he did a wonderful job with this movie. I thought the direction in this film was a real highlight. There are some moments in this that are really impressive when it comes to the visuals, when it comes to the way that he used different camera angles or different ways to move the camera. Uh, I, I really liked his use of lighting and shadow. There are some scenes in this where it showcases moments where the lead character has issues with reality in terms of reality tearing apart and she's seeing her dreams, but in the, the real world. So when she's awake, she's still seeing these dreamlike surreal images. And I feel that the director did an absolutely amazing job creating some genuinely mesmerizing shots throughout this film uh, that dealt with Anna and her psychosis. Uh, he did a good job maintaining tension when it needed to be there as well. Uh, I don't, I don't agree at all with the the opinions or critiques when it comes to Wright's direction. I thought he did a remarkable job, and I think that he was absolutely the most consistent and the strongest performer when it comes to this film and its production. The script by Tracy Letts, at times it's a bit of a letdown, like I said. Uh, one of the twists, it's way too obvious, and that involves uh, Amy Adams' character, Anna, and this conversation that she keeps having every now and then with her husband where she's talking to him about her daughter and it's very obvious at least to me that her husband's dead her daughter's dead this is all in her head none of this really is happening and she's just doing this to cope and once the film finally reveals that it t just takes way too long to do that. It it's almost like it tries to make it this big deal, and it just didn't really work. Maybe it worked better in the novel, but in the film itself, the way that it's written, it's obvious from the moment that you first see her speaking to her husband on the phone. 
I also think that there are some other characters that aren't really fleshed out that well enough. Uh, I understand why some of them aren't because you're supposed to just really focus on the perspective of Anna. So you're not really supposed to know a whole lot about Alistair and some of these other people. But I, I think the script could have done a little bit of a better job fleshing those characters out, making them feel a little bit more well-rounded. And when it comes to Anna, this is a character that at times you sympathize with her. At other times, it's kind of hard to really uh, get that invested into her because she seems a little bit too distant, a little bit too aloof. And also when it comes to Anna, there's a lot of inconsistencies when it comes to the quality of dialogue. So there are some moments where she has some dialogue where she's able to shine, like the few scenes that she has with uh, uh, Russell's uh, son, uh, Ethan. Uh, and those are some really good moments, in my opinion, or the scenes with her and, and uh, Julianne Moore's character uh, played by Julianne Moore. Duh. Julianne Moore's character, Catherine. And... That's when the film comes alive in those moments. But what's interesting is the scenes where she's just by herself are not nearly as Im impressive. They're not nearly as interesting, which is which is really uh, a shame because this is a film that really focuses a lot on her by herself because she's an agoraphobic. She's afraid to go outside. So there's a lot of that going on. Uh, and what I mean by inconsistencies, inconsistencies in dialogue is there's a whole moment uh, later on in the film, once this realization settles in that she's not really all there, that she's dealing with some uh, psychosis that's caused by grief and so on. The dialogue isn't as strong in those moments. It comes across as a little bit too melodramatic. And that really doesn't give Amy Adams the best uh, script to work from. So it leads to her performance being uneven as well. And it is one of those movies too that because of the fact that there's so many of these thrillers that deal with similar sort of things since Rear Window... It, it, it just does have uh, uh, some moments where it is a little bit derivative. Like the whole stuff where the police are like, oh, what are you talking about? Uh, that woman doesn't exist. That's the real wife of Alistair. Who are you talking about? You're crazy. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's still one of those things where the script is still interesting enough. There are some twists and some turns that are intriguing enough to, to, to keep you wanting to continue throughout the film. It's one of those things where it's not inconsistent enough when it comes to the quality overall, when it comes to the script, where it becomes a turnoff or it becomes something where you're like, okay, I, I, I'm done with this movie. That never really happened for me. So I think the script was still solid enough, despite being a little rough around the edges. I don't think it was nearly as bad as some critics made it out to be in terms of the writing. And in particular, I know I mentioned this earlier, but I'll mention it again, and spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, by the way. Uh, the twist that involves uh, Alistair's son, where it's revealed that he's the killer, I thought that was handled really well. And I did not see it coming. I know some people said it was predictable. I don't I I don't agree. It, I did not see it coming at all and I thought it was a genuinely uh unique twist for the most part when it comes to this kind of film. Uh I I really did not expect it. I I felt that it was one of those things where it it worked and it elevated the film and I don't think it was a problem at all. I think it actually made the film better and I think it made it as above average as it is in a lot of different ways because of the fact that the the twist was something that I didn't see that often when it comes to this kind of content the performances by the cast 
they're decent enough. Amy Adams, she's average. There are some moments where she really shines, but then there's other moments where the performance falls flat or the performance just is uneven, like I said, because of the script. Uh, and it just leads to moments where she's a little too melodramatic to the point where it's soap opera levels, like daytime television levels of acting. And that just creates a, a, a bad contrast when you compare it to uh, other parts of her performance. Gary Oldman played a good asshole. That's really what he was tasked to do and he did a good job with that but I feel the character could have been written better and I feel that it was in a lot of ways kind of a waste of Gary Oldman's talents Anthony Mackie for what he was supposed to do fine as her husband who you pretty much know is dead from the first frame he shows up uh, Fred uh, Herchinger I, I really liked his performance as Ethan uh, I thought he was effective when it comes to portraying someone who seemed to be rather innocent, someone who seemed to be the last person who you would assume to be a sociopathic killer, and then I felt that he equally did a good job playing the sociopathic killer. Uh, Wyatt Russell, Kurt Russell's son, he had a nice role as David Winter, this guy who lives in the same house uh, or the same apartment complex as uh, uh, Anna. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry, he was okay as the detective was trying to investigate the case. Julianne Moore was fantastic in the little bit role that she had as Catherine. Uh, Jennifer Jason Lay, uh, Lee, uh, it's not what I would call one of her best performances, but for what she was asked to do, she did a good job. The issue with her performance is that there's barely any meat on the bone at all for her to chew on as an actress. The The role is very uh, uh, paltry. So it's one of those things where, you know, she's starved for content. She's starved for things to really show uh, her best work in. So she's just given scraps and she does the best that she can with what she's uh, provided. Uh, Tracy Letts, I wanted to mention her as well. Oh, actually him, Tracy Letts, my bad. Uh, I want to mention uh, Tracy because I thought he also had a standout performance as the psychiatrist for Anna. The film also features some cin uh, some cinematography by Bruno uh, Del Bono. I thought it was uh, really good. I thought the cinematographer did a great job creating uh, a really nice sense of atmosphere uh, and, and really did uh, create a sense of paranoia that was very palpable. Uh, and a big part of that is also due to the direction and the editing. Uh, the editing by Val uh, Valerio Bonelli. Because there's a lot of scenes in this film that are trying to really uh, ramp up the tension. They're trying to scale things up in terms of the increasing paranoia for Anna. And I feel the editing just really nailed that. Uh, as well as the moments when her dreams uh, or her psychosis starts to break through in into reality. Into the waking world. Uh, there are some scenes in particular that I just love from this film where she's watching television and something happens where it's like the 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 um, screen that she left her TV on like after she was done after after the movie finished and the TV was just I think either on static or some kind of uh, uh, weird channel or whatever or it was just some nightmare that she was having, well, it started to uh, blend into other aspects of her of her life at that point in time. And it just created a really trippy scene that was an absolute wonder to look at. And there were some other moments too, like the, the car accident. I thought that was really well edited and really well shot. Or the scene where, you've see, where um, Anna 
is standing in the room and you see the snow falling, which is a part of her psychosis or her memory uh, cracking through uh, reality. So there are some really nice looking shots in this film. And from a technical standpoint, I, f I honestly feel the film is tremendous and it does not get enough credit when it comes to the cinematography or the direction or the editing. Uh, I also feel the film featured a really good score by Danny Elfman. It was honestly one of the better scores that he's done in a long, long time. Because it didn't feel like he was being lazy here, or he was just copying some of his earlier work. Here it actually sounded like he was doing something that was a little fresh. And it sounded like he was... A little bit more passionate as well when it comes to what he was doing because if you think about it this is not the kind of film that Danny Elfman is known for composing a score for so maybe it's one of those things where he was excited he was excited at the the opportunity he was uh, really looking forward to the challenge and I think that definitely does show when it comes to the level of quality when it comes to the score it's really effective when it comes to creating a, 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 a certain sense of atmosphere or mood or dread or fear. Uh, it really did help ramp up the paranoia when necessary. And it had a nice heart to it too. There are moments where it needed to be a little more tragic, a little bit more somber. And I felt that it was effective in that area as well. And it doesn't really overstay its welcome when it comes to running time. I mean, it's only 100 minutes. It's not like it really drags its feet too much. Overall, I liked it. I thought it was one of the better films, uh, one of the better thrillers that I saw from 2021. And I wouldn't mind watching it again just for the visuals, just for the, the uh, aspects of the film that I did enjoy. I felt it was a fairly above average thriller i don't think it was below average i don't think it was bad i don't think it was anywhere near as atrocious as people made it out to be uh i would say if you like thrillers if the film interested you at all i would recommend watching it at least once because i think there's more to this film than a lot of people are giving it credit for so anyway uh that is uh my review of the woman in the window and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. See ya.